Today, we're going to take a look at some uh, screwdrivers for uh, our use in the shop. We just have a few different kinds, and there are a few that are really common, and those, those are the ones we're going to concentrate on today. Let's, <coughs> let's take a minute and uh, look at the basic screwdriver. It's got the, the uh, shaft here, the point where you actually do the work, and of course the handle. We see the handle usually has some ridges, some kind of grip enhancing uh, a design here to help us get a good grip on it and be able to apply torque uh, to our fasteners. Um, <clears throat> the most common two kinds are the st standard straight screwdriver for a slotted screw and the Phillips head screwdriver, you can see here, has a cross on the end and fits into a Phillips screw. A uh, basic Phillips screw can look like that there and we'll see a few different sizes of these and so on. So let's look at the Phillips screw first. Um, the Phillips screw, uh, the most common sizes are just based on numbers. This is a, a number one Phillips screwdriver. This size here is a number two Phillips. And this one is a number three Phillips. There are number four also, number four Phillips screws, uh, but they're actually uh, pretty rare. Um, and of course it'd be proportionally that much larger for the, the size on, on a number four uh, Phillips tip. Um, <laughs> the most common then is the number two Phillips. If we look at this, here's an example of a, a number two Phillips screw right here. You can see the, the crossed recess there. And then this, this fits very neatly, if we look carefully at that, it fits very neatly into the, the head of the screw so that as you apply force to it, the, the tip should bite in and turn the screw as opposed to kind of slipping out and tearing up either the tip of the screwdriver or the, the uh, recess in the screw, uh, either one is common. Um, if, we, if we try to use a screwdriver that doesn't fit properly in here, we might be able to use it, it might work, depending on how much uh, force is being required, but it's much more likely to slip here and tear this out and uh, not accomplish our goal. We really want to be able to either you know, tighten the screw in tight or back it out and remove it from whatever you've got it uh, screwed into. Um, here's, here's an example of a number three Phillips head. You can see, again, the way this is going to fit in there. This number two Phillips fits loose, may or may not be able to turn it, but if you, if you have the proper fit right here, there's, there's the screw, this is the screwdriver tip, and those two made together pretty neatly to get a really snug fit in there, so you're getting the maximum amount of force being transferred from the screwdriver to the screw. Okay, So that's, that's the number one, number two, number three Phillips screwdrivers we have in our tool cabinet, and <clears throat> it's best if you find the right one to fit the right screw. Uh, now, of course, the other, the other style of screwdriver, very common, often abused and used for all kinds of things. People try to hammer on it and chisel stuff or, or pry open things with it. Um, <clears throat> luckily, we can get these pretty uh, inexpensively, so it's not a big problem. Again, the same kind of thing. We've got the blade, we've got the tip, we've got the, the ridges here to get a good grip on the end of the screwdriver, and uh, different sizes. Um, <clears throat> again, it's going to work best if the screwdriver tip fits neatly into the slot. Now, the thing you'll find if I'm trying to use too big of a screwdriver, it simply won't function at all. It won't go down into the slot. If, try, if I'm trying to use too small of a screwdriver, like this case here, this is pretty close, but there's actually uh, more play in there, more slop, where this screwdriver can wiggle around inside that slot and not get the maximum uh, bite into the screw. And it's more likely to slip and tear up the head of the screw, tear up the tip of the screwdriver, and generally make you unhappy. So the standard uh, slotted screwdriver like that is going to fit neatly in here. This is a pretty good fit right here, where there's not much space um, from side to side this way, and there's not much space going uh, from the flat sides up against the sides of the um, slot in the screw head. Okay. Um, <clears throat> The sizing on these is more like a basic measurement size. And so, um, like this one here, 
is approximately a fourth of an inch wide across here and about six inches long for the blade of the screwdriver. Okay, this one is a four inch long blade and about um, uh, three eighths of an inch wide here across, measuring from one side to the other of the, uh, of the tip. Okay, so that's, so that's the Phillips screwdriver and the straight slotted screwdriver, um, sometimes called a flathead screwdriver or something like that. That's kind of a misnomer. I don't know if there's any such thing as a flathead screwdriver. Okay. Now, um, <clears throat> to be familiar with the different shapes of the fasteners, again, we talked about the Phillips head screw. We've got a straight slotted screw here. Also, I've got an example here of a hex head screw. You can see that's a, a regular um, hexagon shape for the head of the screw. And this is really good where you've got to apply a lot of force to the screw, like using a wrench or a socket wrench to turn it. Um, <clears throat> but in some cases, we want the screw to be able to sit down flush inside the material. And that's what the flathead screw is for. You create a little recess into your material, into your wood usually, and let this head sit down flush so that the, the top of the surface doesn't have um, anything sticking up. It's really handy, like on the bottom of a thing, bottom of a flat piece here, if it's going to sit flat, like flat on the table, you want the screw to go up inside of it so it doesn't cause the whole thing to rock and roll or uh, other, cause other uh, forms of uh, issues. So this is a flathead screw. This is also a flathead screw. And the length on these is measured from the very top of the flat part to the point. So if we measured this with a ruler, we would find that this is a two and one fourth inch screw going from the flat top of the head all the way to the point here. The, um, the hex head screw, as we mentioned before, and basically any of them that are not the flathead are going to measure from underneath the head, right here at this flat surface, underneath the head, right there, all the way to the end. So this would be um, approximately a two inch screw, and that two inches would be from here to the end, not including the thickness of the head here. That head is probably um, <clears throat> just under a quarter inch um, thickness, and that's, that does not count as part of the, the stated standard length of the screw, okay? Um, <clears throat> this one is a, a straight slot screw, but you can see it's not a flat head. This is what's called a pan head. So this would sit above the surface of the material, um, but it's kind of a squashed down, you can see like a flat surface right there, squashed down flat version of the screw. And this one, very interestingly, does not have any uh, slot in the top. It does have a, a square um, piece underneath here, so that when it pulls into something, that can help keep it from turning. But this totally round on the top version is called a carriage bolt. Okay, so carriage bolt, pan head screw, hex head, flat head, right? And I think that's it. And of course, then the difference between the Phillips, the hex head, the carriage bolt head, the smooth head, the, um, <clears throat> the straight slot, and so on. Okay, thanks very much, and um, we'll, we'll be learning lots more about hand tools.